Good morning, and welcome to our Sunday morning Bible study. And we're continuing our series on the uh, victory in Christ. Let me get the remote so I can do this. I forgot that. Victory in Christ. There we go. And so I hope you have your book. And let's open to page 11 as we get started in this this morning. But let's also begin with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for the victory that we have in Jesus Christ. We don't need to get more victory because Jesus Christ has already won the complete victory. And because we have him, we have that victory. And I pray that you'd give us more and deeper understanding of what we have received in Jesus Christ today. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Victory in Christ and our topic as we're uh, getting in on page 11 is... uh, Oh, I've got introduction. Okay, in the topic, I think we're still at the wrong lesson here. That's week one. Let me jump ahead on, I didn't move this one ahead. For in here. Let's get a that. So where's that? There we go. The gospel applied to me. <laughs> Sorry. The gospel applied to me, and our main idea here is that in Christ I am a new creation. I think we know that verse. That in Christ I am a new creation. I am a new creature. Old things are passed away. All things are become new. I am a new creation. There is something which is different. I am not the same that I used to be. So I must see myself as God sees me. I must see myself as God sees me. We know the gospel, but now we're making that application, making it personal, not just for salvation, but for our Christian life. And so as we move ahead in our our lesson today, we learn that new life brings new identity. Because I'm a new creature, I am given a new identity. We know physically life begins at conception. In the mother's womb, that child is alive, but usually we don't give it a name until after it's born. That life comes out, that new birth, uh, that birth of the child is when we give it its name. When there's a new life, when we are born again, there's also a new identity that we have. So we're going to look at some verses here, and we're going to see what those verses tell us about our identity. And that identity, remember, it came as a result. It's produced by our new birth. Because we're born again, it's not just that these things can be in our lives. The Bible says they are true about us. So our first verse is Colossians 3, verse 12. If somebody read that, please. Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved. Bowels of masses, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering. And here in that verse it says we are holy and beloved. We are chosen by God. So in our book you can see we are God's chosen people. We are holy and dearly loved. And that doesn't depend on what we do. That is because of what we are. We are chosen by God, and we are holy, we are loved. We see something similar to this in 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 13. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. Again, it's the Holy Spirit that is sanctifying us, that is purifying us, that is making us stronger and giving us that power. And again, that verse says we are chosen by God. We are loved by God. It's not about us. It's about Him. And then Hebrews chapter 3, verse 1. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus. We are partakers of a heavenly calling calling. We're brethren. We are brothers and sisters in Christ. And in Christ, we are chosen. We are set apart. And God has that purpose for us. Still, we're going through and and 
it's not just repetition on these verses. Don't say, okay, I get the point, and stop listening. Pay attention over and over. God is saying these things because it's important for us. First uh, Peter chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. Be ye a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, into which, in, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not attained mer mercy, but now have attained mercy. We are chosen. You know, every wedding, right? Every wedding has to have that song, We are a chosen Jenna. Ration, right? We have that. And we, we, our, our kids, we always laugh when we hear it because we're always taught, good morning, we're always taught, don't take a breath in the middle of a word when you're singing. We're chosen generation. But we are. We're chosen. We are set apart. We are special people that God has, uh, out of all creation, He chose humanity. He didn't die for the trees or the cows. He died for us. Uh, I'm going to read our next verse, 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. 2 Peter 1, verses 3 and 4. According as His divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of Him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Partakers of the divine nature. If it is divine, what are we talking about? Divinity. Same word. It's talking about God. We are partakers of the divine nature, God's nature. Well, how do we get that? Well, we're born of God. That's when we're born again. We're not born again physically. We were born first spiritually and born again. I'm sorry, born first physically and born again. I already gave you the answer. Spiritually. God is our Father and we receive His divine nature. And because of that, we escape the corruption that is in the world. In my spirit, there is no corruption. What about in my flesh? Is there corruption? Yes. But one day I'm going to leave this flesh, I'm going to leave this body, hopefully through the rapture. It could be through physical death, but one day I'll leave this body, but I won't leave my spirit. The real me will forever be with God in my spirit, and there's no corruption. My new identity. We participate, we receive, we're partakers of God's nature. And then the last verse in this section, 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. Somebody read that, please. Behold, what manner of love the Father has, hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when, we shall, when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him, and he is as he is. Sometimes we talk to people and they give this idea that they hope to become a child of God through this or that. Well, I hope when I die, I will become a child of God. That's not how we become God's children. When we put our faith in Jesus Christ, we receive his forgiveness, his payment for our sin, and we are born again. We are right now children of God. That's what John wrote in 1 John 3. And he's saying, it's really great. God showed His love to us. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. We are His children right now. So if you are God's child, His chosen per person, holy, dearly loved by God and called by Him, then how does that fit with your needs to be accepted, secure, and important and we see at the bottom of page 11 he accepts me so I am accepted I am secure because I am positioned in Christ I am important because I am a child of God Almighty 
sometimes in, in homes, especially in areas of high crime, definitely in, in the diplomatic homes, they have a safe room, what they call a safe room, that if anyone were to breach the compound and begin breaking into the house, there's this safe room with a very hard door, strong door, and, and defenses, and places that even if they get to everywhere else, you're safe in that room. You know, this world is full of problems and challenges and dangers, but in Jesus Christ, where God has placed us in Him, we are completely secure. So as we move ahead, uh, these verses apply to which Christians, and, and we have the answer there, to every believer in Jesus. Every one who has put their faith in Jesus Christ, these things are true. It's not just for a few. It's not just for pastors. It's not just for those who do certain things. Every one of us, everyone who has received Jesus Christ, these things are true. So then we have a question here. Would you describe yourself as a saint or a sinner? Now when we think of saints, we normally think of people that are so wonderful and do so many wonderful things. In fact, some churches teach that in order to be a saint, you have to be greatly revered, do so much for the church, and even have, I think, two miracles ascribed to you. Well, what about us? Are we saints? I would say we have two miracles. I have the miracle that I was born physically. We can't create physical life. God did that. That's a miracle. And I was born again spiritually. Spiritual life, I can't make that. That's a miracle. So I've had two miracles in my life, at least. But I'm a saint because God says, I'm a saint. If you have received Jesus as your Savior, you are a saint. So sometimes we greet people, hey, brother so-and-so, how are you? Hey, sister so-and-so, how are you? We could greet each other, Saint. Saint Brian. <laughs> I think we would feel funny if we greeted people that way. <laughs> but how does God view us? If somebody is calling you, oh, Saint Daniel, how are you? You know, that automatically is saying, I need to be careful what I do, right? How does God see us? He says we are what? Saints or sinners? Saints. We used to be sinners. But when by faith in Jesus Christ we're born again, I have a new identity. My old identity was one of a sinner, but my new identity is one of a saint. And when I think about the fact I'm a saint, I'm going to be more cautious about what I do. Are we a saint or a sinner? Maybe it's just for some few people. Well, let's see what the Bible tells us. We have a few verses here. Ephesians 1, 1 Corinthians 1. There are several, and, and I think some people have those verses. We're going to move quickly. And I want you to notice who is called a saint in these verses. We'll begin with Ephesians 1. Ephesians 1, 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, to the saints who shall aid us, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Not only the faithful are there, but all the Christians in the church were saints. 1 Corinthians 1, 2. Unto the, ch the church of God, which is at Corinth, to them that are sanctified in Jesus Christ, called to be saints, with all that in every place call upon the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, both theirs and ours. All that call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 1.1. 1, 1. I'm making Pastor Tony move with that microphone today. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, unto the church of God, which is at Corinth, with all the saints which are in all Achaia. Achaia. All the saints, all the believers which are there. Um, I'm sorry, was that 2 Corinthians or was that Romans? That was 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians, all right. Romans 1, verse 7. So all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Again, it's all of them that are, were in Rome, all the believers which were there were called saints. And then lastly here, Philippians 1 verse 1. Philippians 1 1. 
or I will read Philippians 1.1. 1, 1. Maybe we're still looking for the verse. Paul and Timotheus, the servants of Jesus Christ, to all the saints in Christ Jesus, which are at Philippi, with the bishops and deacons. The saints are the believers, not just the bishops or pastors, not just the deacons, but all the believers which are there. The Bible calls followers of Jesus saints, holy people. This is true because we are a new creation in Christ. We were made holy. We don't become holy by what we do. We were made holy by His sacrifice. We have a new identity in Christ. We, not will be, not we can become, we are right now saints. If we had time, I'd love to go through the, the uh, list of statements there on page 13 and page 14 of who I am in Christ. But for sake of time, I'm going to ask you to read those aloud with me. And I know those in the other room, you feel like nobody hears you. Well, I want you to say these loud enough that we can hear you on this side of the wall, all right? So we're going to say these together. We won't read the reference, but I want you to read the statement. So like the first thing, I am the salt of the earth, then I am the light of the world. We'll go through these, and I would like you to read them with me as we uh, read them aloud, out loud together and think about them as we say them. Let's begin with the first one. Ready? I am the salt of the earth. I am the light of the world. I am a child of God. I am part of the true vine, Christ. I am a friend of Christ. I am chosen by Christ to bear fruit. I am a slave of righteousness. I am enslaved to God. I am a joint heir with Christ. I am a temple of God's Spirit. I am a new creation. I'm a member of the body of Christ. I am a saint. I am God's heir since I am His Son. I am a prisoner of Christ. I am righteous and holy. I am a citizen in heaven. I am seated with Christ in God. I am an expression of Christ's love. I'm not hearing these voices very well. <laughs> Can we try to say them a little louder like we believe these are true? Um, I am holy and loved by God. I am a child of light. I am one of God's living stones. I am someone with a holy calling. I am a stranger in this world. I am an enemy of the devil. I am born of God, so the evil one, the devil, cannot touch me. That's good news. I am a child of God and will resemble Christ when He returns. I am a member of a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people who belong to God. I am a fellow citizen with the rest of God's family. I am God's workmanship created in Christ to do good works. I am reconciled to God and a minister of reconciliation. I am united to the Lord and one with Him in spirit. I am a son of God, my spiritual father. Anybody just real quickly, I know our time is up, but anybody say one of these stood out to me that just made me say, wow, I'm blessed. Anybody have one that you just want to mention? I mean, there are like 20 that are so good, but they're all good. Anybody have one? 
Okay, well, I won't make, I won't embarrass you. I won't take your time. We're going to look at a couple of these today in our main service. Uh, I am the salt of the earth and I am the light of the world. So we'll look forward to that. But I'll give you a break now and we'll come back in about 10 minutes for our main service.